Hello and welcome to another Edexcel IGCC ICT past paper question. This is the specimen paper and we are up to question four now. So question four then, an airline uses locally installed software to manage bookings. The airline is concerned about viruses. Describe how the use of antivirus software prevents risk to data and information. So how does antivirus software work? It scans the disk and it matches the files that it finds on the disk. So that's two maps. So the antivirus software scans the disk and matches, you need to use that word matches there in your answer for this question. So it matches the files against the library of virus definitions. So it's scanning the disk, it's scanning the files on the disk and matching them against the library, like definition of the viruses that it's got. And when it finds the virus, then it's going to quarantine it and isolate it. So what this does then is checks the disk and it's looking for files that are in its definition of what a virus is and then when it finds them it's going to quarantine the files a2 state one other type of malware uh most common one here i put in is spyware so we don't want to be writing things like viruses there uh, that isn't a suitable answer it is spyware or adware and i'm going to go with spyware because that's my definition of exactly what malware is malicious software which is spyware B, an operating system manages the memory used by booking software. Which one of these is also a function of an operating system? Is it print spooling, creating apps, data protection, or managing a PAN? The only possible answer that is suitable is A, print spooling. None of the others are features of the operating system. C, explain two reasons why operating system needs to be updated. Now, this is the same reason why any software would be updated. It is to gap to plug any gaps in security that that may have so you've got the latest security updates and also to take advantage of any new features that have come out so my two answers here are for four marks so to get the latest security updates to prevent risk of data caused by exports of gaps found since the software was released so criminals people will be looking for gaps to exploit in the software and I can get around that. I can update the software to prevent risks to that, to prevent these people from finding the gaps and exploiting the gaps in the software. Number two, to take advantage of new features and updates for the software to improve the functionality of the software. So those are my answers for this. And this is the same reasons why anyone would want to update any software. Question D, the airline stores large amounts of data. Data can become fragmented. Draw a diagram to represent the fragmentation. Label your diagram. Now, to draw this, I'm going to draw on my trusty friend PowerPoint because uh, it's a lot easier than me trying to draw using the fill and sign here in Adobe. So imagine that this is a disk. And as we save stuff on the disk, the computer saves it in different parts. So here's different files I'm saving to the disk. And they're saved in different areas of the disk. So the orange represents the files and the blue represents the, uh, the rest of the disk, the empty space. So the orange represents the files and the blue represents the space. And we can see that it's not the best use of space. It's not the most efficient use of space. Imagine you had a shed or garage, storage room, and you put all your boxes in there, but you just kind of scattered them here, there and everywhere. And you didn't really think about kind of pushing them onto one space. And you're not really going to have much floor space. Okay. What we need to do is use defragmentation software because this is what's called fragmentation. The disks are fragmented all over the disk. We use defragmentation software to push all the files into one place, which gives us much more space. And we can see that we've nearly got half the disk still left over to save our files on, which makes much more efficient use of the space. This is what we call fragmentation and the software that we can use the utility software defragmentation allows us to get around this so this is question e the airline stores transactional data about customer purchases customers who fly are offered rewards by the airline and other companies analyze the use of transactional data by the airline eight marks so this is question e the airline stores transactional data about customer purchases Customers who fly are offered rewards by the airline and other companies. Analyze the use of transactional data by the airline. Eight marks. So let's have a look at this eight mark question here. The airlines store transactional data about customer purchases. Customers who fly are offered rewards by the airline and other companies. Analyze the use of transactional data by the airline. Eight marks. 
So eight marks then. How many of you would consider writing a plan for an eight mark question? It's almost guaranteed that you're going to get an eight mark question in your exam. What does eight marks mean? Well, it means it's almost 10% of the total GCSE grade for this paper. Eight marks. Eight marks is almost going to be a grade boundary that you move up by if you get full eight marks from this question. So absolutely it's worth writing a plan and you should plan it out before you go in and start answering the question. I'd recommend that you get some paper, some spare paper, you ask the examiner for some spare paper and you write down a plan. And I'm going to show you how to do that. So the words transactional data are what we've got to be considering here. So we've got to analyze the use of transactional data by the airline. So I'm going to make a plan. Now, I've written the word transactional data in the center of my page there. Obviously, I've done this in PowerPoint just to make life easier, but I'd get a spare piece of paper in my exam if I were you, and in the center, I'd write down the words that I need to analyze. So in this case, it's transactional data. So I've drawn a circle around that, and I'm going to create kind of like a spider diagram of different things that I need to be including in my answer. So first thing I need to think about is exactly what it is. Transactional data is data that's stored when transactions are made, data stored in cookies. What data? Would an airline store? So I need to think about what exactly it's going to be storing. What about data protection? The data should be held securely as it's sensitive information, financial and contact details, etc. What data would an airline store? Personal details, purchase history, flight routes, common flights taken, etc. It must, it must link back to the airline. It isn't a generic company selling whatever. It is actually an airline. So you must think about the airline to get the maximum marks from this because you're going to analyze the use of transactional data by the airline. Other companies, so we're talking about a third party here. So it does specifically say in the question, other companies. So I need to think about other companies, the third, what we call the third party. How would they use this data? This is called the third party data as it isn't used by the airline. It's used by other companies that are going to market, but they are linked to the airline. So we're thinking about other companies, things, companies that may want to sell you something, hotels, car hire, etc. Then we're thinking about using transactional data to personalize the experience, offers on frequently traveled routes, etc. So how are we going to personalize the experience for the customer? We've got this data about where they fly to, how often they fly. So what, how are we going to use that data? Well, we're going to use that to personalize the experience that we give to the customer. And then we're going to think about how airlines use that data to make business decisions. So this is what I've taken apart, and this has taken me a few minutes to kind of plan it, but that plan is really going to help me to construct my answer now. So if we look at this, these are the descriptors here. Now, I want to be looking at level three, six to eight marks. I want to be thinking about what I need to do to get six to eight marks. Now, you don't get this in your exam, but what you can do is consider, okay, I'm going to get an eight mark question. And this is how the examiner is going to mark it, no matter what the question is, okay? Because it's quite generic for all these types of questions, these A03 analyzed type questions. To get the eight marks, I need to have clear evidence of analysis. Analysis will identify the relevant points in the scenario, the scenario in this case being the airline, but this scenario could be anything that you get in your exam. The outcome of the analysis will be explained in detail. The response will show good focus and organization. So what does that mean then? I need to analyze the use of transactional data by the airline. I need to make some relevant points. I need to explain it in detail, so I need to write enough. I'm given almost a side of A4 in my exam for a reason. I need to fill it. If you're just writing a, a paragraph, then that's not going to be enough. I need to show good focus and organization, so I really need to organize my question. And I'm going to go through that now and show you how to do that. So point evidence explained to explain it in detail. Let's look at how we do that. Constructing an answer. Okay, so here's here's my possible answer. So I'm thinking about the first point that I made in my plan. I'm taking my first point and I'm going to write down some things here. So the airline stores transactional data. This is data that's stored when the customers make purchase of an airline ticket online. The data is stored in cookies. So that is my first point to take to take my first first bit that the first thing that I wrote in my plan. Second thing that I wrote, why would they, what would they, what data would they store? So thinking about location, gender, family members, name, age, and probably one of the most important thing is details on the frequent destinations they've flown to. I'm thinking about what data, what about data protection? We've got highly sensitive information here, financial details, addresses, 
This is stuff that criminals would love to get their hands on. And if that data was leaked, it would cause huge problems to the customers as well as the company. So I need to make that. Now, the next thing from my plan, which is kind of cut off on the screen, but it says, what data would an airline store? So I'm thinking about personal details, flights, common, common flights taken. And I've kind of stated that before. So I've, I've just kind of reiterated that there. There's nothing wrong with reiterating this, but I've kind of I've said, as stated before, um, customer personal details and the flight they commonly take. What about third party companies? Third party organizations would use the data to target the airline's customers with information about products they wish to buy or offers they might want to take advantage of. The customers are more likely to buy these products as third party organizations which use data on what exactly uh, actually buy to target them. So if, if the person is on the plane and they're making purchases on the plane, regularly do that. They regularly buy purchases on the plane from the airline catalog then we can use that to target them with other things that they might buy. So say they regularly buy confectionery, sweets on the plane. Then we might target them with special offers that we've got. And third parties might target them with special offers that they've got. How can we personalize the experience? So we can think about their dietary requirements. We can think about family members and where they frequently fly to. If they frequently flew to a certain destination, then they may offer them discounts or offers on certain routes to get them to fly even more and to get, to get them to spend their money, fly even more. What about business decisions? At the end of the day, whatever scenario you're given, it's likely to be a business. So we're thinking about, they need to make money. Airlines need to make money. So they're gonna use that transactional data to look at what their popular routes are. So they can offer maybe more flights on the more popular routes, maybe cut down some or even end the less popular flights, for example. Then I want to be writing a conclusion because remember I'm getting marks for constructing my answer. Now, I'm not necessarily gonna get marks from my conclusion but I will get marks for the way I've structured my questions. So I think it is worth just writing a sentence or two to create a conclusion. In conclusion, transactional data provides very useful information for the airline that can be used to develop their business. However, it must be stored securely. That is highly sensitive. Now I've not written a lot there. I'm just kind of secure, concluded my main points. What I don't want to do is really repeat myself because I haven't got time, but I've kind of just wrapped things up there with my conclusion. So here is my full answer. Now, obviously that is typed, but that would easily cover the side of A4. And that would be plenty for the examiner to kind of get their teeth into and understand, have I got, have I written enough there to get eight marks? So have I written enough to get eight marks? Well, I think I have, because uh, if we take this apart here, this A03, I've referred back to the airline. So I've referred back to the, relevant points in the scenario. So I kept referring back to the airline. It is an airline. I've not talked about a chocolate factory or factory making toys. I've actually talked about an airline and not made been generic saying a business. I've said an airline and you should say an airline in your answer. Outcomes of analysis. So what is the analysis? I've made a point. I provided some evidence. I've explained it. So the explanation there has given me the analysis in detail. Good focus. I've used my plan. So why did I create a plan for my mark question? Because it provided good focus and showed that I can organize my points. Trouble is, if you just sit down and start scribbling and start writing things, what's going to happen is you're not going to show good organization. You're going to limit yourself, perhaps, in terms of marks. So maybe the examiner might be thinking, yeah, you've made some really great points there. I would like to give you level three. But because you haven't really organized your points, I'm going to give you level two. So we're thinking back to the original question. Why do we plan? Why do we plan our answers? So to wrap it up, why plan? To organize your thoughts, to show good organization, to get the top grade boundaries, to think about, really think about what the question's asking you, to make sure you don't leave anything out, to get your thoughts on paper so they can be written neatly later. Now, you need to provide a really good answer for an eight mark question. It needs to be neat, it needs to be readable. If you all just sat down and you start getting all the thoughts, if you start writing your answer immediately, you start filling in the, the gap that you're given in the exam paper to write your answer, what's gonna happen is, it's not gonna be very neat and tidy and your brain's gonna be working so fast that you can't get things down on paper quick enough. So you're not organizing your answer properly. You're not really thinking about, have I got all the thoughts there? Because you can't really see them. 
if you do what I've showed you to do, if you make a plan, if you kind of draw out on paper, maybe in diagram form, maybe mind map form, exactly everything that needs to be in the answer, then you're going to get a better answer. You're more likely to get eight marks because you've really thought about what needs to be in the answer. You've thought about organization. And therefore, all you've got to do then is take, take that diagram, take that mind map and create an answer. And you can write it as neatly as possible because your brain isn't working to think about it. Your brain will just be thinking about presenting that in the neatest way possible and the best way for the examiner to see that you've really thought about that answer and you're really going to get those eight marks. So why plan then to get eight marks? It's as simple as that. And I think if you're not planning your eight mark questions, then I don't think you're really going to be getting eight marks. I don't really think you're going to be maximizing your advantage in these questions. So absolutely, my top advice to you is to plan your answers carefully to eight mark questions a big big thank you for watching this video please consider liking and subscribing only 14 percent can you believe it only 14 percent of people who watch my videos have actually subscribed why subscribe because i'm creating videos all the time for both papers computer science and ict and your subscription is really going to help me to grow the channel and i'm going to be doing lots more exam questions so again a big Thank you for watching. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.